Good morning. It is a joy to be here. And I have been tossing ever since Pastor Outen asked me to speak on what should I say. And I was tossing between just having a down-to-earth conversation about what it is to be a pastor and the struggles that we have. I thought about that, Pastor. And then I thought about, well, that I'm still where I am. <laughs> Father, in the name of the Lord Jesus, we simply want you to be glorified. As we focus on the work of one of your servants, I pray that all that he would have been privileged to accomplish by your help would never overshadow the helper who is you. I pray that as we rejoice in his personhood, that we would never rejoice in him more than we rejoice in the God who made him what he is. So today we are privileged to be able to highlight truth about who you are and who your servant is and who your people are. And I pray that you would do a work here this morning so that you would be glorified. We would be edified. And the world would have to stand in awe as we see you on display. We ask these things in Jesus' name. Amen. I make no bones about it. I have great love for Pastor Alvin. And I, I, I don't hide that. One of the reasons I joined the association is also in the efforts that he has for the association. What I want to do for just for a few minutes before I settle down with a message, I, I want to talk about some of the joys and the struggles of being a pastor. I, I firmly believe that it is one of the most difficult jobs around. Let's look at some of the joys. And I, I believe knowing Pastor Out the way I do, he would be able to agree with these, both the joys and the challenges of being a pastor. Our greatest joy is seeing you do what God says to do. That's where we get our greatest joy. Our joy comes from knowing that we are leading people to the only wise God. That we are slowly but consistently seeing the wayward sheep become sheep as opposed to the wayward sheep. The joy is knowing that a person was something and because of Jesus and the giftedness that he has placed in us, that person is now on the road to be something else. That's the greatest joy being a spiritual leader. Almost equal with that is just knowing that we have done what God has called us to do. There is an insatiable, what I call righteous dissatisfaction that rests with a, any serious pastor. We are excited about what happens, but because we see what's down the road, sometimes the sheep wants to stay around the celebration pool a little longer than we want to stay around the pool because we know right across the brow of the hill there is some challenges. And so one of our challenges is that we are never fully satisfied even though we ask that the Lord would make it a righteous dissatisfaction as opposed to a self-centered dissatisfaction. Another joy of being a pastor is that it is exciting when you know that you have helped an individual, not just the body at large, but an individual. 
and for the help that we offer many times our help is almost unappreciated because we we are not a social services as an individual entity we, we don't give out checks and money and pay rent and those things sometimes a simple bit of advice that says don't do that could save a person's whole future sometimes just simply saying you need to do that could make all the difference in the world another joy is that you come to us and you dump your world on us and you leave the office and you are free but another half hour later in walks another person and they dump their stuff on us and then that person is free and then two hours later a family comes in in great turmoil almost daring you to fix the situation if you are all of that and then you you carry that weight for the person and many times we we become the spewing board I like to use the word at life vomit you vomit on us and we're supposed to take the vomit just like when a baby vomits on us we don't slap the baby for vomiting on us we just simply wipe it off and we keep going and even though at the end of the day we may be weary in mind and in spirit there is a joy because we practiced what Jesus did and that was we bore your burden those are some of the joys of being spiritual leaders another joy we get is that we we are excited when we could take the scriptures and God in his wisdom and in his mercy gives us insight only God could do that and don't mind how smart you think we think we are I often say this and I, I this is true even as I'm speaking to you you would be shocked at what the Spirit of God will tell me to say in the next two words we glory in the fact that in our frailties God still speaks to us man that's uh, let me give you some of the flip side of the coin people forget that we're human beings and that hurts us so you, you could blow your cool at us but when we blow our cool at you 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 all of a sudden remember the verse that says be angry and sin not you forget that we have feelings sometimes people forget that we we have our own sensitive areas too and then sometimes you don't allow us to be human beings some we we need to pick the pulpit up and smash it on the ground and you need to say praise the Lord hallelujah as opposed to that guy has a temper tantrum so often we're not permitted to be human beings you you see us as super duper human beings who and you would say things well the Lord called you so what is that supposed to mean you see your whole body attitude says so you are supposed to be all of that because God called you so what it what has happened to a lot of us is that we we are schizophrenics you know what that is right that that's only in behavior not in actuality not by diagnosis and so we have to learn to pretend in front of you and then we have to go somewhere else and explode because you all don't you all forget that we we're not we're not almighty we get tired mentally and physically for, for example let, let me show you this you really believe you, you know for example I, let me give you an illustration to prove the point uh, years ago I had an elder who was terrified at a hospital seriously I was off the island I remember getting a telephone call he said pastor uh, sister so-and-so's boy was shot I said we'll go to the hospital and he 
said, man, I, 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 I can go, but I, 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 I can't handle the blood. I, I'm saying, well, bro, I off the island. He said, boy, pastor, I can't go. He said, because, he said, anyway, he called me back.